morning from Kyoto. Crazy what a little bit of sleep and rest can do for you. As you can see, my eye is not as red and bloodshot as it was during my Mount Fuji vlog and I clearly have more energy and pep. Make sure you guys take care of your bodies when you travel. I definitely feel a lot better physically and mentally. I think the mentally comes a lot with the physical health. So yay. I am in Kyoto for three days. It's really like two full days. But um, so I don't really know how much I can actually get in here. I realize now geographically I should have allotted more time in Kyoto to take more day trips. But instead I'm staying more days in Osaka. Right now I am headed towards the direction of this Airbnb experience that I had booked for traditional paper making. But I still do have a little bit of time, so I'm trying to go see if I can find this breakfast place. There's this style in Kyoto called Obanzai. Basically, Kyoto is within the mountains, so it's actually known for like its fresh vegetables and stuff. Obanzai is basically just a bunch of small dishes of fresh vegetables, whatever, what have you. So yeah, now I'm going to go try to find a restaurant for breakfast and not to the workshop. It's very simple, but you don't find this in the, in the West, you know? Like, you know Chinese restaurants or whatever, they don't serve this kind of stuff. You got to make four different postcards of your own washi paper. You learn about how they make the washi paper, what they use the washi paper for. I thought it was really cool how they said the most widely used form for washi paper nowadays is actually for the money, which is so cool. And they come in different forms. They use like the softer ones they can make into table mats. They have coarser ones make into bags. But nowadays there's only like 400 farmers who make the fibers for the washi paper so it is a, like a dying art because like 18 1600 years ago it was 68,000 farmers farming these fibers that was a really cool experience would definitely recommend it it's a really small shop but they are very very informative they have their own products I think the Airbnb uh, experience link in the description box below next up we're going to go to the Gion Ward because that is the place to be. I'm gonna be honest. I don't know where I'm going. What? I'm heading in the general direction of the shrine. So 
many like matcha dessert stores that I want to go to, but I'm too full. Shrugs, man. Hi. I was able to get a walk-in reservation for Kichi Kichi Omurice, which I'm really excited about. And then I also ventured to get my first pharmacy medication abroad. I have a headache forming, so I wanted to get some ibuprofen. And so I went into the drugstore with my phone in hand with the translation. I was like, I've broken doku desu ka? And then I'm thankfully the pharmacist was able to help me. And I just took some, so hopefully my headache will go away by the time that I can go eat. Also, I really, really love walking around Kyoto so far. Um, I just think the architecture is really cool because there, it's like a mix of old and modern and everything's just more like quaint and more walking friendly. It's not as crowded, even though the area that we were in earlier today was very touristy. It um, Maybe it's also the fact that it's not golden week, so it just feels better. But overall, I'm really, really liking Kyoto. It's not as overwhelming and very, very pretty to look at. That was more fun than I expected it to be. I thought it was also so cool how he basically like gives everyone an individual show. I mean, it's very much for the tourists and very much for social media and all of that. But the food was not bad. It was, I don't know if it was like the best omurice I've ever had in my life, but like for the small portion, it ended up being around like $10 USD. Um, it's 14.50 yen. And honestly, for a show like that, 
um, it was a very intimate setting uh, it was really fun the atmosphere was really really nice um, they even for the people who were sitting at the table and not necessarily at the counter they were still able to get the full experience because not only are they able to like come up to the counter to take a video when he is cooking the rice and everything but like when he's doing the egg part he goes to every single individual person like he goes to the table <laughs> because there's only availability for maybe like 10 to 15 people per hour the reservations open up an out uh, a month in advance but if you have the time you can always try to do what i did which is go at like four o'clock four or five o'clock opening and try to like sneak in for a walk-in to see where they can fit you in it's really based off of luck because it just depends on if anyone cancels last minute or like no shows most likely is with the cancels fun experience would recommend so today I actually woke up early enough to see people go to work and so the first train that I was on I was in a in a cart full of like businessmen in suits and then the second train that I got on was, was, was full of students I was like wow this is what happens early morning huh I take longer, I take longer, right? <laughs> There's like summit inflation or something because things just get more and more expensive as you get closer to the top of the summit. traditional fermented rice drink but non-alcoholic it's really good and then mix it with a little bit of ginger and it just like warms up your whole body it's like really soothing after the hike it can also be served cold for warmer days today's nice weather but it's still kind of chilly so the warm one real good that was really good i do not regret that and also i feel like it's something that you can't really find anywhere else at least i haven't seen it would definitely recommend that if you're looking for something different um and don't want to be with the crowd also something really good just braved my first public bus experience in japan and I am pretty sure I pay double. Okay, when you're in Taiwan, and also I think in Korea too, you beep your card when you get on, and you beep your card when you get off. I was reading online and they said like, if you're paying cash, when you get on, you get this piece of paper that shows you what stop that you got on, and then that way you can calculate the fare for when you get off. Same for IC card, there's usually a beep machine at the entrance which is the back door by the way you get on the back door and then when you get off you be off but then when i got on i didn't see a machine at the back door so i walked to the front door and i beat my sega card i was like watching other people get on and no one beeped anywhere that i could see the back door there was no paper collected at the back door. They just paid when they got off. So then 
I beeped my Suka card again when I got off. And I'm pretty sure my total is more than 230 yen less. Oh well. I just donated an extra two dollars to the Kyoto public transit system, I guess. Still cheaper than it would have been if I took a taxi. Terrible things started happening when you walked away. So that's why I say smaller than I thought it would be. Honestly, I feel like I wear my backpack in the front way more than I do as a backpack. Also because like when you're on the bus and stuff. The bus, the train, you wanna have it in front of you for one security purposes. Two also you don't want it to like bump into random people. And so I just got into a bit of this. Also, it's easier to grab your things. Also, it doesn't you balance out the weight on your back. I don't know what to do after this. Maybe I should research. I'll do that. So, I just came to the Maikoya, Kyoto. I originally was trying to get a spot for tomorrow morning so that I had something to do after I checked out of my guest house. They happened to not have any openings tomorrow morning, but they did have an opening now. So, hey! I did the tea ceremony. It was very informative. Um, got to know the traditional way to prepare the matcha tea. Um, how to serve it and how it's typically served etc etc um, and also comes with a kimono rental which i get to play around with so now just to make it pairs so i'm gonna do my shop around and then get some kukatsu or or should i get a matcha noodle today Hmm, decisions. I'll think about it. So cute. <laughs> It's been a while since I've chased a sunset, but timing worked out and I figured why not try to see a good sunset in Kyoto today because the weather is really nice. So I'm climbing stairs again. So I searched online for the best viewing spot of Kyoto sunset. And it was at the, what is it called? Kodenji parking lot. So that's where I'm at now. So why would I? You guys had fun with me in these two days in Kyoto and please don't follow the itinerary that I had because my itinerary was all over the place. I will link everywhere that I had gone in the description box below and you can figure out by location what is what will work best for you because honestly I was everywhere today because I did not plan out my trip well but I just kind of did what I wanted to do and I had time so I was like I'll just go do it now then um, 
there was one thing that I did not get to do on this trip, which was going to the bamboo forest, but that's okay. I probably could have gone today in the afternoon instead of going to the tea tasting or tea ceremony, but I didn't want to deal with the crowd, so that's something that I would have saved for like an early morning trip. I'll see you guys in the next vlog. Bye!